Brady, I understand your favorite sport is making a comeback. I, Alexis, I cannot even begin to tell you how much I love football. And I know it's just March, but you know what they say, some football is better than no football, right? We're coming up on sports O-line overhaul. Spring football is in the air, and the Cougar offensive linemen are looking at a whole new high-octane system. And Tournament Fever, we're bringing you coverage straight from Vegas with recaps of the first day's games. We'll be right back. It's the most wonderful time of the year. College hoops are moving into postseason play, and the Cougs will need to bring home the WCC title if they want to go dancing. 11 sports reporter Sean Gordon is in Las Vegas for the tourney, and Sean, it looks like you're enjoying the sunshine. That's right, Brady. We are here in Las Vegas. The weather's great. A little bit windy, but nice and sunny. Great temperatures, but it's not all fun and games. We are here to cover the Cougars in the West Coast Conference Tournament. The action has already tipped off. The play-in games for both the men and women are in the books. Let's start off with that men's game. Loyola Marymount looking to snap a 15-game losing streak, taking on Portland, and hot shooting from outside gave them an early edge. Not to be outdone, Portland answers from outside. Here's three of Ryan Nicholas's 18 on the night. But with the Lions up three late, some fancy passing gives Ashley Hamilton the big dunk, and LMU snaps their losing streak with a 65-54 win. With the win, the Lions advance to take on five-seed San Francisco in the first men's game today. Then they'll be followed by San Diego and Pepperdine, and the winner of that one takes on BYU tomorrow. On the women's side, Pepperdine taking on San Francisco, an early and one from Tessa Anderson for the Waves. But it was all San Fran in this one. The Dons jumped out early and cruised to the 80-48 win. The Dons will take on LMU coming up at the top of the hour. The winner of that one takes on BYU tomorrow. And on the other side of the bracket, it's six seed Santa Clara taking on number seven Portland. So it's a full slate of basketball here on both the men's and the women's side. Now neither BYU team plays until tomorrow. The Cougar fans are already showing up ready for tourney time. And 11 sports reporter Justin Ashby is here with me. Justin, you had a chance to talk to some of the BYU fans. Are they ready for Cougar basketball? Sean, absolutely they are. You know these fans come out days in advance to camp sometimes and I caught up with some fans that are already here and they're all prepped for this weekend's tournament. I'm from Shelly, Idaho, and uh, I've watched every basketball game this year at BYU, so I'm kind of a super fan. We've been coming for about 15 years. We haven't made every year, but just about. It's and a we, family thing. Yeah, well, we have to support our team. Stopped in D.C., from D.C. to here. So my son from Boise will be in tonight with his friend. My wife will be in tomorrow. We've really made it a tradition. Yeah. I love love watching the neutral games, obviously watching uh, you know our games, but um, the neutral games are fun to watch and just sit back and relax. Yeah, fun to hang out with family. I think BYU has been playing good ball, and they're on, just around the verge. They're just on the bubble of winning all the games. I think we'll be in the championship. I really do. It looks like the fans beat the Cougars here this week, but they have the arena all prepped and ready to go for when our team arrives. Well, and let's hope that our team can give the fans something to cheer about this week. Thanks, Justin. Now, the first women's game of the day tips off in less than an hour, so we're going to pack up. We're going to head inside, but we will be back tomorrow on CougTube with in-depth coverage. We'll take a look at today's games. We'll also do a preview of both the women's and the men's for the Cougars tomorrow. But for now, in Las Vegas, I'm Sean Gordon with Justin Ashby for 11 Sports. All right, great. Thank you very much, Sean. John. Moving to the gridiron, BYU head football coach Bronco Mendenhall confirmed the worst about junior defensive back Trent T Trammell. The JUCO transfer went down with an ACL tear during Monday's practice and will redshirt the upcoming season. Man, he's a, he's a fantastic kid, and uh, it was hard for all of us to see that injury, non-contact injury, just planted in the turf, knee shifted, no one around him, and it's just really hard to see. Coach says Trammell is set to have surgery March 14th. He would have been the likely starter at the boundary corner. And with spring football starting up, we get our first look at the Cougars' new offensive coaching staff. 11 sports reporter Mark Chalice has been suffering from football withdrawals for almost three months. He joins us in the newsroom now. Mark, how's our new offense looking? Brady, it was looking pretty sloppy out there. The new coaches push the offense harder and faster than the players are used to. But this season is going to be all about the offensive line, a group that really struggled last season. A new coaching staff generally means growing pains for a football team, and the Cougar offensive line is no exception. I'm still a long, long ways to go. 
uh, but they're embracing the standard that we're setting, and that's the biggest step. Eventually, the mastery and execution will come, but we're working them hard, and they're, they're doing it. New offensive coordinator Robert Anai calls his offense, go hard, go fast. All the offense players will have to adjust and condition for what is basically a hurry-up system. Anai's offense presents a challenge for the linemen. Being 300 pounds and trying to run a play every 20 to 30 seconds isn't easy. Last year, BYU's quarterback spent a lot of time running east and west under former OC Brandon Doman's style of QB draw snops and reads. The revamping of the line in a nice pocket passing system will be key to having a successful season come fall. My emphasis is to have a dominating offensive line, to exert our will, to steal that will from other men. Uh, that will be our main focus. A large group of recruits from high school and junior college will join the ranks of the offensive line this fall. At that point, the coaching staff will make final decisions about... In 2013, the Cougars will face four teams that were in the top 25 last season. With that kind of schedule, they're going to need good play from the O-line. In the Live in the Newsroom, Mark Chalice, 11 Sports. Well, Mark, that was a great piece about the O-line, but I want to know more about the rest of the team. How are we looking? Well, like I said, it was sloppy. Both sides looked hungry, though. The offensive players and coaches were just as intense as the defense, which is something we haven't seen in other years. Oh, and by the way, um, Taysom Hill, coming back from his surgery, he looks like he's recovered great. He was keeping up with Jamal Williams in, in sprints. Well, that is very good news. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh-huh. Well, I just want to know when the first game is. Well, the first game is not until August 31st against Virginia, but we're in March now, and March 30th is the blue and white game, the, the inner squad scrimmage, and so we're almost there. At least we're in the same month, right? Yeah, that's exciting. Well, I certainly can't wait. Thanks, Brady.